I want to know the experts in everything, so I'm not going to waste your time trying to bullshit you with something I don't know anything about. Those would be the people that you would talk to. Next question. Yes, sir. Uh, with Facebook, you can boost your posts for money. Is it worth it, and why? It is if you understand the target you're trying to hit. So the bigger problem that most people will do is they'll say, okay, I've got this video that's doing really well, and let's just say it's a Luke Bryan song. Which, by the way, let me just tell you something real quick, side note. Don't put cover songs on Facebook right now because Universal, Sony, they're pulling them off. And it's a good reason they're pulling them off because Facebook has refused to pay streaming royalties, so they're protecting the intellectual property. Okay, so well, how am I going to build my audience? Don't build it off the back of somebody else. That's somebody else's intellectual property. They're going to fight for you too. So here's what you're going to do. So let's say that you do a super cool song that you think that Jason Aldean's fans would like and Luke Bryan's fans would like and Brantley Gilbert. We'll just use those three as an example. The bigger problem most people make is they'll go in and they'll say, all right, I only got 10 bucks. So I'm going to click the US. I'm going to click Canada. I'm going to click Europe. I'm going to click all the countries that, I, that it lets me. I'm going to pick all. Everybody from 13 to 65, and I'm going to pick Luke Bryan, Jason Aldean, and Brantley Gilbert. Then you spend 10 bucks, and you're like, man, nothing really happened on that. You've got to get targeted. you got to sit there and say, okay, let's use 20 bucks for an example. So if i got 20 bucks, I'm going to do an ad for five bucks, and I'm going to say United States, males 18 to 34, Brantley Gilbert. I'm going to do another ad. United States, males 18 to 34, Jason Aldean. So I'm going to split up my money and do more targeted, set it out there, and then I'm going to see which one works. Because you don't know what to fix if you don't know what's broke. So if you put all this stuff in on your social media platform, then you don't know which one's working. Because once you find what works, then you want to throw as much money at it as you possibly can, because then you're printing money at that point. You know, there's a mentor of mine that's like, this guy spends probably $250,000 a week on social media. He's an internet marketing guy. He's like, if they'd let me spend a million, I would, because I know the return. What you want to become, and this was said to me and I laugh, become a dork about the data. Understand your insights on Facebook. Go to ads.twitter.com. Put in your credit card. You don't have to run a Twitter ad but it will let you see analytics. If you have an Instagram, click business, and now it'll let you see analytics on your Instagram account. See, I go learn all this stuff so you guys don't have to. And with my programs, I just update them. Because it's, I go and shoot a video, and I'm like, did I say the same thing? Whether one person's listening or a thousand people are listening. Then I just upload it, and it stays the way that it is. Because here's the thing. Can I tell you guys a secret and you won't share it with anybody? I suck as a manager. I was terrible. Why? Because I called bullshit too often at the label. I love the artist development side. I love the fun. Why? Because I didn't go to school for this. I just loved watching the effect that my artist music had on people. So all I wanted to do was that part. The other part just wasn't it. Plus, she was growing so fast. I'm like, dude, I come from radio. I got a GED. How am I going to pull this stuff off? I've never been on a world tour. You know, so I found my part. My part, what I'm really good at, is teaching and simplifying things. That's what my strength is. Do I get to walk red carpets because of it? No. Nope. Been there, done that. Do I get to fly on private jets? Well, I do when Scott asks me to go to LA with them because he asked me to be the mentor for American Idol. So yeah, I still get to do that on occasion. But you gotta pick your part. You gotta understand what your role is. That's what my role is. You know, I don't ever want to be judged by who I manage. I never want to put that kind of pressure on an artist that my family survives only because that artist does those things. So I realized early on, this is what my strengths are. This is what I'm best at, and that's what I encourage you guys to do. There's not many people that are great singers, songwriters, and musicians. Not many. It's a few. Not many. So don't try to be all things either. That's another bit of advice. Question. Comment. Call bullshit. <laughs> Everybody's good? Man, I charge two fifty an hour one on one, so get it out now. This is on Doke. Will? Adam? It's all there. Yes, sir. You got a brilliant song, you're pretty you turn it off. What's your next step as far as what to do with First off, who said it's brilliant besides people that know you? I mean I'm being honest. 
wallow. Everyone, I, you know, every day I got a, I got an email today. I read it, dude. I just wrote a smash. <laughs> There's never been a song that's been money put behind it, released out of Nashville that somebody didn't think was a hit. But guess what? Not all of them are hit. So you've got a song that you think will touch a certain group of people. Let's say that. Yeah. First things first. Go find a hungry audience and feed them. You can have the best hamburger stand in the world. If you open it up in a town of vegetarians, you just screwed yourself. <laughs> You're just sitting there holding a great burger. So if you've written a song, the question I would ask is, who is this going to touch? Let's, it's cancer month, right? Okay, October. I manage Rita Wilson. Okay, I do manage two artists. But that's a funny story. I'll tell you. That's what I'll end with with the Rita Wilson story. So if you've got a song about cancer right now, not everybody's going to play it. People are actually probably going to get tired of it because everybody's throwing out a cancer, a song about cancer or something right now. But what I would do is I, I would go and I would say, okay, what do all of those cancer, I'm going to say, say the cancer society for lack of saying anything else, what do all those cancer causes have? They all have Facebook pages. Guess what they don't create? Content. Do you know Budweiser has 90 sub, or uh, I think it was 28 million people that like their Facebook page, and if you click on it, only 97,000 people are talking about it. But if all of a sudden you were able to come on and maybe do a song, your cancer song to that thing, you know what's going to happen for that website? And this, we're doing this all the time right now. This is the strategy that I created and that we're treating with brands. Is that Facebook's going to go, wait, Facebook Live's going on. Here you are singing your song about the cause because your mom died of cancer. And now all of a sudden, more people are being reminded about this page. So that Facebook page went and built an audience that you can go get in front of because you wrote this brilliant song about cancer. And if you do it right, you're going to be able to introduce yourself. You're going to be able to post a link to get people back to your website. That's millions of people. But hey, let's just say we have a Facebook page that only has 30,000. I'm doing some stuff with Orca Coolers right now, which is the Nashville-based company a lot of people may or may not have known. They got 66,000 people on there. I've got a couple artists that love Orca Coolers, and now they sit on their Orca Cooler in Florida, play a little thing. Orca is now putting their logo on these Orca Coolers, and they're not charging the girls up front. They're saying, hey, go out. Everybody that orders, we'll just pop it up. We'll ship it out. It's that relationship that got started. So go find that hungry audience and feed it. If you've got a local business, if you've got a coffee shop in town that's got a thing, start at the website. That's what we're doing a lot of times when I was working with Trent Harmon, who won American Idol. As I went to Scott, and I said, look, I said, why don't we do a Facebook Live radio tour? I said, we could hit 10 major markets in four hours and never leave Nashville. Do you know how expensive radio tour? Do you know what that does against your checks and balances when you're an artist signed to a label? That's what happens. It's a cost about a half a million dollars to launch an artist on the lower end now at the major label level. And then they put out a song on iTunes, and guess what? Nobody's buying music anymore. So if you're not making it back, that's why the 40% on the merch comes in, because they know if you get a hit song on radio, you can jump on a tour, whether you have an album out or not. So they're going to try to get it back wherever they can. So right now, we're just sitting there going, hey, let's cut down the expenses and it does something well for the radio stations because they all want traffic to their Facebook pages. I said I wasn't going to sell anything, but I'm going to tell you about a program that I have. It's called the Music Industry Syndicate. And what that is, is it's four group coaching calls a month with me, three or four, depending, uh, and a whole bunch of cool videos. It gives you direct access to me. You can shoot me a question, I answer your question. You get my cell phone number, my email address on these monthly calls. I unlock you, you ask a question, you hear how I solve everybody else's questions too. I'm just an advisor and a teacher for a lot of people. We have a couple hundred people from around the world that are part of that right now. Uh, that's something, if you feel you have questions or you want to bounce ideas off of somebody, that's a real smart investment. It's less than $400 a year to have me and access to me to be able to ask anything you want to. But what it also does is if you set up your business properly, it's rubbed off. Most of you haven't set up your business properly. And that sucks because there's a lot of things that you could be doing. There's a lot of relationships that can be made. You need to treat yourself like a business. Or if you got a boatload of money, just treat it like an expensive hobby. Because that's what it's going to be for most of us. And there is nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with doing what you love. But when you want somebody else to start investing in you, 
your mind shift has to change. It does. We're not saying you can't be artists. We're can't saying you can't be creative. We're just saying, stop being dreamers, start being doers, and start being realistic. And if there's anything else I can do, any other questions, I'll stay after and talk to as many people that want to talk to me. You have another question, or are you just judging your hat? Oh, I, I got one, I guess. Um, <laughs> and then I'll get to you. With a I at an it. auction, I just sold you something very expensive with that little move you just made. Well, with having uh, so many different like social media streams, I mean, is it kind of like a more the more the merrier type? No, that is an absolute fantastic question. The only ones you need to survive in the music business right now, I could give a crap about Snapchat. I could give a crap about Musical.ly. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. YouTube used to be really important to me, but it's just gotten so loud now that I can talk to people in a longer video setting on Facebook. I prefer to do it that way. Uh, you don't want to be any, you want to be where you can consistently show up and provide value. I can't provide value on Snapchat. Nobody wants to see me with devil horns, so if I can't provide value there, I'm not going to waste my time. But when I Snapchat, you'll notice when I Snapchat, when I'm backstage at an event that other people can't get into, I'll Snapchat to bring them in, to let them be a part of something. If I'm on vacation and I'm seeing a bunch of cool stuff, I'm snapping all day long. Everybody tell when I'm out someplace, they're like, dude, you must be traveling. <laughs> You're on Snapchat. Instagram on a daily basis. I don't spend a lot of time on Instagram, so I have someone who does it for me. You know, Maddie was here a second ago. She goes and watches all my videos, gets, makes these beautiful creative quote images, and she posts them for me. I have Catherine. Uh, she does all the tweeting for me. I go in and answer everything. She schedules them all for me in a program called Status Brew. I go where I can provide value. I encourage you to do the same thing. A couple things you need to do is if you're not going to be someplace for a long period of time, shut it down. Because if we show up, no one likes to go to a party that's boring. So if we show up and there's nothing really going on or it doesn't look like you, the artist, show up there, I'm checking out. I'm going to someplace else where I think that I might be able to get noticed. So wherever you can be consistent. If you think about it, here's my freebie for you. Treat your social media like your meal plan. Give them something for breakfast, give them something for lunch, give them something for dinner, and in between where you would snack, go in and comment and like and share their stuff. 